Hello everybody, um, so, so far in our wildlife week videos we've thought about the invertebrates that you might find around in your garden on the ground, we've thought about our pollinating insects, our bees and butterflies that might visit our garden and we've thought about the birds that might need feeding and that would be around and about uh, giving us their beautiful bird song. So the next thing I want to talk to you about is some water animals. We're um, very lucky in that some of our children have got ponds in their garden and one child in year three has sent me some absolutely brilliant photographs of things that they found when they were pond dipping in their pond at home um, and I wanted to show them to you because we're not all lucky enough to have ponds in our homes so I thought you might like to see. So I've got the photographs here. So the first thing, this is really interesting, this is what happens to a leaf that has been in the bottom of the pond, in all the sludge at the bottom of the pond. And you can see that the uh, leafy parts have all rotted away and it's left behind the beautiful skeleton oops, of that leaf. So I thought that was really fascinating. So that was the first thing that they found, the beautiful skeleton with all of the leafy bits all rotted away. So that's what happens in the bottom of your pond, all of that sludge is all full of lots and lots of microorganisms and little invertebrates which will feed on all the dead stuff that sinks to the bottom. They found tons and tons and tons of these. Now this isn't very clear in the photograph, but that is a water louse. So just like we have wood lice on land, in ponds there are lots and lots of the watery versions. So that might be one of the things that helps to eat away the leafy bits of that leaf to leave behind the skeleton. And then what I think is probably the most exciting thing that they found, let's see how many of you know what this is. So this was something that they found in their pond and it's got, you can just see it's got two legs at the front. And if I try and move it up a little bit, you can see it's got a long tail that curls around the side. It looks, or bit like the lizard, it looks slightly like the lizard that our year one child found on the airfield, but this is actually an amphibian, which means it can live on land and in water, and it is a newt. So I think that's absolutely brilliant that they found this newt in their pond when they were pond dipping. That's fantastic. So thank you for sending me those photos, that was really, really good. Um, so the next couple of photographs I've got to show you, I don't have a, a, a very big pond in my garden, I'm going to show you my little pond in a second, but my parents have got a pond in their garden. So here's a picture of my parents' pond. So it's not too big, but you can see there's lots and lots of, that's called duckweed, floating on the top and they've got some lily pads in there as well. And also what they've got lots of in their pond at the moment are these. So I asked my mum if she could fish some of these out into a bowl so that we could see them. These are of course tadpoles. Now they have every spring they have loads of frog spawn in their pond and these tadpoles are probably a couple of weeks old. You can just begin to see at the back end there's a tiny little bulge there and that will be where the back legs start to grow because that's the first thing that happens to a tadpole as it changes into a frog its back legs start to grow so what I'll do in a, in a week or so's time is I'll ask my mum to send me another photograph of the tadpoles so that we can see how they're growing and we'll keep monitoring them until, as they grow up into uh, little frogs, little froglets they're called. So as I said, I don't have a very big pond in my garden and most of you won't have ponds in your garden, but actually it is possible to make a pond very, very easily. A pond does not need to be big. It can be really, really tiny and if you leave it long enough, if you leave it a couple of weeks, you will get some sort of wildlife in your pond. So I'm going to show you the pond that actually Ruby made in our garden a couple of weeks ago. So here is the pond that Ruby's made in our garden and it's very very simple to make. All you need is some sort of container. So we've actually used what is an old cat litter tray 
you could use um, an old washing up bowl or an, even something like an old margarine tub or an ice cream tub. As I said, it does not need to be very big. A pond can be really, really tiny. It still counts as a pond. So some sort of container. And what you need to do is dig somewhere um, suitable, preferably not in full sunshine, somewhere where it would get a little bit of shade. You need to bury your container so that the edge of the container is level with the ground. Um, and then you can fill in with soil all around it, a bit like we did when we made our pitfall trap. Then in the bottom of the pond, I don't know if you can see in there, Ruby has put some gravel in the bottom and an old shell or two. And that's so that there is somewhere for any little organisms, any in invertebrates and animals that end up in your pond, so they've got somewhere to hide. You'll also need somewhere where animals can climb out if they fall in. So if an animal was to fall into your pond that wasn't a pond animal, it would be able to climb out. So she's put a little bit of wood in here so that things can climb out. Um, she's decorated around the edge of it. She actually put a pot, a pot in there with these plants from our garden, which are forget-me-nots. So these are not pond plants, but actually they're doing pretty well there. And then we got from a friend of ours who has a pond, they very kindly dropped off for us a few little bits of pond plant that we've put inside. And you can see that actually it makes a lovely, lovely little pond, a small one, but it doesn't have to be very big. And after a couple of weeks, we are starting to get little bits of wildlife. So I don't know if you can see, there are actually some insects skating around on the surface. And um, pretty soon, I'm sure there'll be lots of things wriggling around inside. It's a little bit difficult to show you on the, on the video. But there you go, that's how you can make your very own pond in your garden. We've got our little bug house next to it as well. And there's Luna the dog, who is very interested in the pond quite a lot of the time. Um, so that's our tiny garden pond. So as well as pond animals enjoying your pond that you make, other animals will enjoy it as well. So all the birds that are around will come and use your tiny pond to drink from and to maybe to wash in. So there's lots and lots of benefits for making a little pond in your garden. All sorts of wildlife will benefit from it. Remember, it doesn't need to be big. My ponds, are the one that Ruby's made is about this wide. You can make one from a margarine tub or an ice cream tub even. And I'll keep you updated as to what happens to my mum and dad's um, tadpoles. Hopefully we'll be able to follow those as they uh, grow up into frogs. And if you do have a pond in your garden and you find anything interesting in, in there, then don't forget to um, send me a photograph. I'd love to see what you've got. Okay, bye.